here's part two of chapter three. Running out of light bulbs, running out of power, running out of time, disaster was right around the corner. That's what Dune was thinking about when he stopped outside the gathering hall on his way home and saw Lena on the roof. She looked so free and happy up there. He didn't know why she was on the roof, but he wasn't surprised. It was the kind of thing she did, turning up in unexpected places. And now that she was a messenger, she could go just about anywhere. But how could she be so lighthearted with everything falling apart? He headed for home. He lived with his father in a two-bedroom apartment over his father's shop in Greengate Square, the small items shop, which sold things like nails, pins, tacks, clips, springs, jar lids, doorknobs, bits of wire, shards of glass, chunks of wood, and other small things that might be useful in some way. The small item shop had overflowed somewhat into their apartment above. In their front room, where other people might display a nice teapot on a tabletop or a few attractive squashes or tomatoes on a shelf, they had buckets and bucket, boxes and baskets full of spare items from the shop. Things Dune's father had collected but not yet organized for selling. Often these items spilled over into the floor. It was easy to trip over things in this apartment and not a good idea to go barefoot. Today, Dune didn't stop in at the shop to see his father before going upstairs. He wasn't in the mood for conversation. He removed two buckets of stuff from the couch. It looked mostly like shoe heels and flopped down on the cushions. He'd been so stupid to think he could understand the generator by just looking at it, when other people had been working on it their entire lives. The thing was, he had to admit, he'd always thought he was smarter than other people. He'd been sure he could learn about electricity and help save the city. He wanted to be the one to do it. He had imagined many times a ceremony in Harkin Square, organized to thank him for saving Ember, with the entire population in attendance and his father beaming in the front row. All Dune's life, his father had been saying to him, You're a good boy and a smart boy. You'll do grand things someday. I know you will. But Dune hadn't done much that was grand so far. He ached to do something truly important, like finding the secret of electricity, and, as his father watched, be rewarded for his achievement. The size of the reward didn't matter. A small certificate would do, or maybe a badge to sew on his jacket. Now he was stuck in the muck of the pipeworks, patching up pipes that would leak and break again in a matter of days. It was even more useless and boring than being a messenger. The thought made him suddenly furious. He sat up, grabbed a shoe heel out of the bucket at his feet, and hurled it with all of his might. It arrived at the front door just as the door opened. Dune heard a hard thwack and a loud ouch at the same moment. Then he saw the long, lean, tired-looking face of his father in the doorway. Dune's anger drained away. Oh, I hit you, father. I'm, I'm sorry. Dune's father rubbed the side of his head. He was a tall man, bald as a peeled potato, with a high forehead and a long chin. He had kind, slightly puzzled gray eyes. Got me in the ear, he said. What was that? I got angry for a second, said Dune. I threw one of these old heels. I see, said his father. He brushed some bottle tops off a chair and sat down. Does it have to do with your first day at work, son? Yes, said Dune. His father nodded. Why don't you tell me about it, he said. Dune told him. When he was finished, his father ran a hand across his bald head as if smoothing down the hair that wasn't there. He sighed. Well, he said, it sounds unpleasant, I have to admit, about the generator especially. That's bad news. But the pipeworks is your assignment, no way around it. 
What you get is what you get. What you do with what you get, though, that's more important, wouldn't you say? He looked at Dune and smiled, a bit sadly. I guess so, Dune said. But what can I do? I don't know, said his father. You'll think of something. You're a clever boy. The main thing is to pay attention. Pay close attention to everything. Notice what no one else notices. Then you'll know what no one else knows, and that's always useful. He took off his coat and hung it from a peg on the wall. How's the worm, he asked. I haven't looked at it yet, said Dune. He went into his room and came out with a small wooden box covered with an old scarf. He set the box on the table and took the scarf off, and he and his father both bent over to look inside. A couple of limp cabbage leaves lay on the bottom of the box. On one of the leaves was a worm about an inch long. A few days before school ended, Dune had found the worm on the underside of a cabbage leaf he was slicing up for dinner. It was a pale soft green, velvety smooth all over, with tiny stubby legs. Dune had always been fascinated by bugs. He wrote down his observations about them in a book he had titled Crawling and Flying Things. Each page of the book was divided lengthwise down the center. On the left, he drew his pictures, with a pencil sharpened to a needle-like point, moth wings with their branching patterns of veins, spider legs which had minute hairs and tiny feet like claws, beetles with their feelers and their glossy armor. On the right, he wrote what he had observed about each creature. He noted what it ate, where it slept, where it laid its eggs, and, if he knew, how long it lived. This was difficult with fast-moving creatures like moths and spiders. To learn anything about them, he had to catch what glimpses he could as they lived their lives out in the open. If he put them in a box, they scrambled around for a few days and then died. This worm, though, it was different. It seemed perfectly happy to live in the box that Dune had made for it. So far, it only did three things. Eat, sleep, it looked like sleeping, though Dune couldn't tell if the worm closed its eyes, or even had eyes, and expel tiny black poop balls. That was it. I've had it for five days now, said Dune. It's twice as big as it was when I got it. It's eaten two square inches of cabbage leaf. You're writing all of this down? Dune nodded. Maybe, said his father, you'll find some interesting new bugs in the pipeworks. Maybe, said Dune, but to himself he said, no, that's not enough. I can't go plodding around the pipeworks, stopping up leaks, looking for bugs, and pretending there's no emergency. I have to find something important down there, something that's going to help. I have to. I just have to. And that is the end of chapter three. Um, again, fourth graders, make sure to draw a picture of what happened in this chapter. It could be from the whole chapter, from one specific point. Um, and also write a summary using somebody wanted, but so then, or using first, next, then finally. Thank you all for listening. I miss you all so much and hope you and your families are staying healthy. I will see you soon.